Hello, Mrs H here. If we are going to learn about photosynthesis, we need to remind ourselves of the structure of the organelle where photosynthesis takes place, the chloroplast. This is a granum, a stack of membrane bound compartments. The plural of a granum is gran -a. And these membrane bound compartments are called thylakoids and it is the membranes of these thylakoids where the light dependent stage of photosynthesis takes place. This is the first stage of photosynthesis. The fluid part of the chloroplast is called the stroma and the second stage of photosynthesis takes place in the stroma and is called the light independent stage of photosynthesis. So there are two stages of photosynthesis, the first stage is the light dependent stage and the second is the light independent stage. And a quick reminder before we move on that chloroplasts do actually have their own DNA and ribosomes. We're going to focus on the light dependent stage so need to look at the thylakoid membrane more closely. It is a phospholipid bilayer this is the outside of the thylakoid, so the fluid on the outside is called the stroma. And this is the inside of the thylakoid, the thylakoid space. Embedded in this phospholipid bilayer are two different types of photosystem, photosystem one and photosystem two. There'll be also some proteins and a very special protein, which is the enzyme ATP synthase. And there'll be lots of these photosystems and proteins and ATP synthases throughout all the thylakoid membranes, in all the thylakoids, in all of the grana. And just before we get started, we'll have a quick look at one of these photosystems. A photosystem consists of a cluster of light harvesting pigments, the accessory pigments, and a primary pigment reaction center, which is actually a chlorophyll A molecule. There are two types of chlorophyll A that have slightly different peak absorbency of light. So this could be a chlorophyll A molecule whose peak of absorption is light of the wavelength 680 nanometers, and we would call that P680. And if its peak absorption is light of a wavelength of 700 nanometers, we would call that P700. The accessory pigments are really important for absorbing the energy of different wavelengths of light and funneling this energy to the chlorophyll A molecule. I'm sure you remember that different colored pigments can absorb different wavelengths of light. So having a variety of different pigments maximizes the absorption of energy that can be funneled to the chlorophyll A molecule. You might see different absorption peaks represented by an absorption spectrum like this. And in the autumn, when the chlorophyll breaks down, we see the other pigments that are there all the time in the leaves, but are usually just masked by this chlorophyll. Let's get started on the light dependent stage process. Here is the thylakoid membrane again, and the two photosystems that work together, photosystem one, P700, at a slightly higher energy level than photosystem two, P680. Light energy is absorbed in photons, which are packets of light energy. And for each photon of light absorbed, two electrons are released from chlorophyll A. And this is called photoexcitation. These electrons are accepted by primary acceptors, which will be proteins of some sort. And the photo excitation has now created these electron holes in the photosystem. The electron hole at photosystem one is filled as electrons pass along a chain of carriers called an electron transport chain from the primary acceptor for photosystem two. As the electrons flow along the electron transport chain, some energy is released and this energy is used to pump hydrogen ions or protons across the thylakoid membrane and into the thylakoid space. 
Remember that hydrogen ions wouldn't be able to pass through the phospholipid bilayer. I haven't drawn a channel for them because I thought it might complicate the diagram, but um, they are being pumped across this thylakoid membrane into the thylakoid space. So now we have a created a proton gradient and the protons diffuse through the enzyme ATP synthase as they do so, ADP and inorganic phosphate join to make ATP. Adding inorganic phosphate and ADP together to make ATP is actually called phosphorylation because you're adding a phosphate group to ADP. So it's phosphorylation. And because this has happened in the presence of light, we call this photophosphorylation. This generating of the proton gradient by pumping the hydrogen ions from the stroma into the thylakoid space, and then those hydrogen ions diffusing through ATP synthase, that is called chemiosmosis. So what we have is photophosphorylation has occurred by chemiosmosis. Quick recap. Electron hole at photosystem 1 has been filled by the electrons that came from photosystem 2 down the electron transport chain. Right, so that's been filled. We've still got an electron hole in photosystem 2. Now what happens is this electron hole pulls electrons from a water molecule causing that water molecule to split. The splitting of water is called photolysis and the electrons from the water molecule fill the hole at photosystem 2 and then we're left with half a molecule of oxygen which is released so that's where our oxygen comes from in photosynthesis and that could be used in plant respiration or it could diffuse out of the plant and we also have hydrogen ions and the hydrogen ions can be part of the proton gradients and these hydrogen ions will ultimately bind with a coenzyme called NADP, along with electrons from the primary acceptor at photosystem 1. And what happens here, because the NADP has gained electrons and protons, NADP becomes reduced. So we now call it reduced NADP. NADP is an electron and hydrogen carrier, very important for the next stage in photosynthesis. We have a look now at what's been produced. We've got reduced NADP and ATP, and both are needed for the next stage of photosynthesis. This process so far is called non-cyclic photophosphorylation, and it involves both photosystem one and photosystem Two. One more small thing to mention before the end of this stage is that ATP can also be made by cyclic photophosphorylation and this uses photosystem 1 only. There's no reduction of NADP and there's no photolysis of water in the cyclic photophosphorylation. And what happens is if the electrons are not used to reduce the NADP, then they can pass back to photosystem one, if there's still an electron hole there, via a different electron transport chain. And as they do that, they release energy and then that is used to pump hydrogen ions across the thylakoid membrane. The hydrogen ions or protons will build up this proton gradient They'll diffuse through the ATP synthase and then we get some more ATP made. There isn't as much ATP made by cyclic photophosphorylation, but there is some. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you found that useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content.